Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create truly fluid type. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my video on type, but you could watch this full web topography course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseZetro.com. So today we're going to talk about Typetura or Typetura.com, which allows you to integrate truly fluid type into your user interfaces. So what do I mean by fluid type? Well, traditionally, when you're setting up your CSS and your media queries, you would use those media queries to change the size and the margin and the padding of your type-based elements, like your paragraphs and your H1s, H2s, h whatever. Uh, but that's not really a fluid type of system, unless you have tons of media queries and nobody wants to do that. So with Typetura.com, we can actually use their web-based interface for controlling our type here and making different changes. You can even change the font color and you can see how it actually tweens from red to black. And also as we scale this in more and more, I don't know why my uh, computer is lagging a little bit. Uh, we can see that the, the, the line height as well as the margin and padding uh, and the font size are all adjusting and it is a truly fluid system. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to get up and running with this. We'll first work within typetura.com and then I'll show you how to actually integrate it into your projects. All right, let's get started. All right, so here is the interface and we're gonna work within this interface first so I can show you how you use this interface to create your fluid type and then we will integrate it and make it work on a project. Um, so I'm gonna click reset here just to make sure we're all on the same page. And what we have is basically, it's, it's, it looks like a timeline, but it's not, but it's, it's, it's what's, um, we're adjusting the type based on the viewport. So we have an iPhone, iPhone Plus, iPad Portrait, iPad Landscape, and then fill screen, which is up to 1600 pixels or greater. So when you're doing this, you want to generally stay and st you want to start adjusting your type based on mobile first. So we're going to start with the smallest right here. Um, so the way this works, if, if we click on H1, uh, the heading right here, we'll see it adjusts the properties over here. You can see it says heading one. Right here is our paragraph. And we can add other elements as well, other type-based elements for us to style and to have type ter Typetura uh, essentially make it become fluid and responsive. And so I'm just gonna stick with just these two to keep things simple. Um, although you just click it, you, you specify the content and then you're able to make all the other same adjustments. So we'll start at the top. Welcome to Titura. So you have to ask yourself, uh, based on the type that's there, is it going to be dynamic? Do you know it's always just going to say, welcome to Titura? What size do you want it to be? Um, and so this is subjective to a certain degree. Um, I think this size is fine right here at iPhone. Um, looks perfectly fine to me. I do want to change the font family. So we'll click on this. You could use a font stack here. I'm just going to go to Google Fonts and, of course, type in Montserrat, as I always do. Same thing with the font family here. Google Fonts for the paragraph, Montserrat. Okay, so now that that has changed, I think this paragraph, the line height, should be increased a little bit. So we come down to line height and we put in, I don't know, 1.7 rem units. I think that looks good right there. It just spaces it out, makes it a little bit more easy to read. Um, from there, let's say the font size, I wanna keyframe this section as well. And this little indicator is to, to let us know that we've specified a custom value here. I'm just, I like the font size, but I'm gonna put a keyframe here anyhow, one rem unit, which is what it would be by default. But the reason I'm gonna put a keyframe in here is because when we go back out, say maybe to, and we drag this and we say, okay, Things should certainly start getting bigger. Maybe we'll go all the way out to iPad landscape. And we'll say at iPad landscape, 
maybe things should be quite a bit bigger. Maybe we'll even go all the way out to fill screen just for the font size. So if we got the font size now and we put in a new font size, what we think the font size should be for this specific viewable area and larger, we'll say, um, or within that frame, sorry, we'll say, mm, what's five? Oh God. I meant to have the H1 selected. So make sure you select the H1, not the paragraph. So let's do font size five rem. That is pretty beefy. That's fine with me. So um, we do have an issue with the margin and padding, uh, or the margin a bit. So we'll fix that though. Let's make this uh, larger as well. So the font size, I don't know, two rem units. It is quite big, uh, maybe 1.8 rem units. All right, it is larger, that's fine. And let's also adjust the line height. So two rem units maybe? No, I wanna go larger, 2.5 rem units. That's pretty good right there actually, I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, good. Okay, so now uh, if we drag this in, ah, it's we forgot to modify here let's click on this the, the very first section let's give this a uh, a font size of one rem is that what we do no we wouldn't we'll try two rem units let's try 1.8 rem units i want it to all fit in one area there we go okay so now watch how they fluidly scale up so that now if you go on like an iphone uh, like an ipad portrait it looks good at this size it looks good here and it looks good here in my opinion as well just if we're talking about the font size uh, and the line height but there's too much much of a space here i don't really like that um it actually might be fine right here but if we go down on iphone for instance there's way too much space here so i want to make an adjustment on that specifically so we'll click on the h1 we can come down to margin and padding and we'll say for the margin here, we're gonna do a margin of, let's see what happens if we just hit zero. All right, that's better. It's, it's, it moves things up a fair amount, but it still has some you know, decent amount of white space. Um, the top, it seems like it has some margin as well, a little bit too much. So um, I think I may just leave it like that right here. So now we have a new, uh, basically like a keyframe right here, but we have to reset this up here. If we go all the way to fill screen, that's actually not too bad where the way it is, but let me click on it and maybe we'll, we'll push things down. 1.5 rem, and then maybe I uh, will do Yeah, we'll just do three RAM units just to show, show that this actually does work. So now we come down and we'll see everything is starting to adjust, including the the margin as well. Very, very cool. Just to show you one crazy thing, we can, let's say right around here at iPad Portrait, we want to change the color, the font color for some reason. So we'll go from black. So we have to make sure we set this actually at black. As we can see, it's now keyframed. framed. We'll go right here somewhere in the middle and we'll change it to red. Oh, Jesus, Gary, I chose the wrong selection again. Let's go back to iPad portrait, make sure H1 is selected, make this black, come out here in the middle, make sure H1 selected, we'll make this one red. And then we'll come back to iPad landscape and we'll say this will be black. So now watch what happens. So if, if you're at, if there's any device that's viewing this page, it will actually show this, this non red, this dark red color as it's, you know, creating a tween between each of them, which is very cool. Not sure why you might want to do that, but the possibility is there for sure. So now let's say you're happy with what this type and all your type looks like. So we could see you down here. It's a kind of a small panel. 
uh, we have all this CSS code that's been generated based on what we've you know done here in this sort of timeline. So we're going to take this and copy it, and then we're going to set up a project, and we're going to install typetura.js and get this working in the context of an actual project that you're using. And you've you know essentially have used this online tool to help you set it up. Of course, you could write all this code yourself by hand without using this, but this is just a handy interface that you can now use. So let's get started with that. I'm going to get out a console. All right, so now what we're going to do is, is hop into your uh, code folder, make a new folder for this quick project, uh, make directory, we'll call it type tur uh, test and type tur test. Oops, we got a CD into that first. There we go. And now that the directory is made, I'm not going to bother working with npm or like no node at all or making a package JSON. Uh, we're just going to use the CDN version of this. So I'm just going to hit code period to open up the code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And we're going to create an index.html. Hit exclamation point enter. And at the bottom, we're going to real quickly. If you click on type Tura and then right click on install type Tura JS, you'll get to this page right here. And it's going to show you the different ways you can install it. Um, again, for a more robust and real project, you would use node package manager likely, um, or via a script tag right here, which is what we're going to use because it's on a CDN. So now we'll just paste this here at the bottom and we're good to go so far. So now what we want to do is get uh, our uh, a CSS file or folder going. So I'm going to make a CSS folder. We're going to have a main dot. I, I think we'll do SAS here as CSS. And if you have the live stat SAS extension installed, if not, you just go to extensions, type in uh, live SAS reloader, I believe it's called compiler right there. Uh, you can install that. And once it's installed, then we can click once it's selected on main SAS file, watch SAS here. Okay. And then what we want to do is go back to our, our little type based project and we're going to copy all of that stuff and then paste it. All right. So as you can see, it's based on using keyframes, um, except it's not based on time. Typetura.js will, will take a look at the CSS itself. And instead of making it based on time, it's going to be based on the width of the browser based on how these things uh, will animate. So you can also see this is all wrapped inside of an article and a paragraph, and also another one down here, an article H1. So we have to save this, and we have to wrap everything in that article tag. And again, you don't have to. Uh, you can adjust those the, the selector to either emit an article um, tag or not. And then we have our H1 element, so our H1 element can be whatever we want it to be. So this is fluid type. All right. And then our paragraphs, of course, can be whatever they want to be. And so I'll just type in lorem to get our lorem ipsum text right there. Maybe um, I'll paste it again. And then maybe we'll just replicate this line and take off a little bit to make it look a little bit natural. All right, and save. Now I want to make a quick adjustment just to the body element itself. Um, so yeah, I think the only thing I'm going to change here for now is just uh, margin zero to get rid of default uh, margin padding and then height as well. Um, and so let's go ahead and take this, right click, open with live server. Again, you're going to need a live server extension right there for that to work. So reload that, reload install and then reload your Visual Studio Code Editor and then right click open with live server. And of course, I have it running on a different instance of Visual Studio Code. So let me stop that one and open this one again. All right, looks like it is not here. Oh, and one final thing in order for any of this to work, we're going to link up our style sheet main.css. I was wondering why that was not working. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead back here. All right, so you can see we're on our iPad, I think, portrait right around there. But watch this craziness. So we scale it in. We see our red type. Everything, including the margin, is all being adjusted out to around 1,600 pixels, which is right around here once it stops. Very, very, very cool stuff. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that, and now you could perhaps use Typetura in your own projects for fluid type. All right, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.